Hello and welcome to this session on the new user experience at User Groups Live from York. So my name is Steve Prendergast, I'm a product manager here at Anaplan and for the last 18 months to two years I've been working on the new user experience. So what we're going to do in this session is we're going to talk a bit about why we've done the user experience, new user experience, we're going to give a brief demo and then we're going to go through some tips and tricks on how to get started in the new user experience as well as talk about some of the things that we're currently wor working on. And so also presenting with me today, we've got Dave. Hi, I'm Dave Waller, uh, also a product manager based here in New York. I work very closely with Steve on the new UX. Okay, so why did we build a new user experience for Anapan? So we wanted to make our user experience for end users more engaging, so bringing people to the right place at the right time. We want to make it more collaborative, so people are working off the same data, the same plans across the same pages. And we wanted to make it more personalised, so people can make customizations to their pages or their screens to make it more pertinent to the job that they need to do. And finally, we wanted to make it seamless across different screen resolutions, different devices, uh, including the mobile app. So as part of that, we've delivered a number of components that make up the new user experience. So the first of these is a new user interface. Um, so many of you have probably seen this already, but as you can see, a lot more modern look and feel uh, with different cards that we've got which present the different data pulled out from the model. We've also developed a mobile app. So this is available today to download from the Google or the Apple Store. And anything uh, you build within the new UX is immediately available to view and use within the mobile app as well. And we're also currently working on a new home page, or home experience, which will bring together the new ex user experience as well as the models within the solutions that you have built out today. So the news experience, the, the web interface, is made up of two different types of pages that we have. So the first is a board page. So the idea is this is a more like a traditional dashboard where you might have your high-level KPIs or your SLAs, and you can drill down on one of these cards in a board into a worksheet where you do more of your detailed analysis and planning, such as filtering um, your grid, for example, or sorting um, to do that analysis. We've also simplified the design experience um, so that there's more consistency in the different cards uh, within the pages. Um, so this allows it to work better on different screen resolutions and devices. So that's a bit about the, uh, the front end, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about the back end as well. So we've developed the new user experience uh, from the ground up using more modern technology. So we've taken a component-based architecture so this means we can do more things in parallel, which means we can reduce the cycle to get out critical changes and features um, to you, our customers. We also have over 10,000 automated tests, and we performance test the new UX on a daily basis. Um, and it's much more capable of dealing with higher traffic and throughput, um, and also has high availability and redundancy and resiliency built in. And one of the other great features of the new UX is it gives us the capability to do zero downtime releases. So we can release uh, often um, lots of changes or updates without impacting any work for our end users. So let's talk a bit about uh, the timelines of the new UX. So we actually delivered a beta version of the new user experience at the back end of last year. And then we ran a period of six months in beta where we had around 60 customers uh, playing around with it, trying it out, giving us feedback. And then we had an early access, open early access to all customers uh, CPX in San Francisco in October and then we ran that for a few months so that was in June rather and then we ran that for a few months and then we uh, announced the general availability of the new user experience uh, in October in our London CPX. And actually between that time in the announcement of CPX in June and October we released an additional 29 new features which just shows the velocity um, that we can achieve uh, with the new user experience. So I wanted to talk a bit about the kind of the new UX framework and how it works. So we have what we call in the new UX apps. So here you have, um, and an app is like a collection of pages which might solve a particular business process or use case. So here we have uh, an incentive compensation management app. And then here we have an FP&A app. And the idea is you have a number of pages within those apps and each page can point at a single model. So a user could navigate from one page to another page within the app, and in the background, they'd be transitioning from one model to another model. So they no longer need to log out of a model and then log back into a model 
um, if they happen to have um, a task across the two models. We're also working on a home page, which Dave will talk about shortly. And this basically allows you to navigate direct to one of your pages in your app. Uh, we've also got re recents and you can favorite pages, but you can also lo log in to a model directly as well if you need to, because you might have existing solutions within a model. Um, the other great thing about the new user experience is it's effectively a, a presentation layer that you can sit on the top of all your existing models. So all your structure and your logic and your formula can all remain in place um, and you just can put the new UX as a presentation layer on top of that. Okay, so let's jump into a quick demo now and, and give you an idea of the two different page types and how they can work together in the new user experience. Okay, just need to sign back into, so if I go to apps, so this will take me to the list of apps within the, the new user experience. Um, so I'm interested in a reporting app. And I'm going to start with a board here, which is um, a headcount capacity example. So at the top here, I've got three KPI cards. And this shows my projected capacity for my sales team. So I have a projected capacity of 21.6 million, but a target of 23. So I have uh, a negative variance there of 8.6%. And I can see the trend here over the chart that I'm consistently below the target for the whole quarter. So the idea is to get the capacity uh, on the line or above the target. So I do this by drilling down into a worksheet. And this is where I would start to do my detailed analysis and planning. Um, so I can see there I've got my negative variance across the quarters. And I can pull in uh, additional information from my insights panel here on the right hand side. So I could pull out a bigger view of the visual, which I had on my board page. But I could also pull in my capacity by role. So I have my junior, mid-level, and senior salespeople, and I can see what their targets are overall for each quarter. And I might expect more from my senior salespeople. So I can actually up their target. And then that will use break back to break back across the different quarters. And you can see um, that the, the red is starting to go more orange and yellow. Um, and I can pull in my other visual, and this saves you scrolling around lots of big dashboards because you can just pull in the different pieces of information you want to work on into your working panel. So you can see I'm over the target in some areas, but not everywhere, so I'm still not quite there. So I can now look at my ramp profile. And again, I might expect my senior people to ramp up quicker, so I can update their ramp percentage uh, for each month. As I start to do that, as you expect with Anaplan, that's updating all the data within the model and all the aggregations around that in real time. So now if I go back to my board page, I can see my variance has now gone to a positive 5%, which is a lot better, and my capacity is now above my target. So there's an example of where you've got the high level board page at the top and you can drill down into the worksheet where you do your planning and analysis. So at the moment, today you have to be a page builder to build out pages within an app but we have added the ability to create my pages as well. So this means any user can create their own page. They don't need to rely on the model builder or the page builder to make page tweaks for them. So you can save an existing page as your personal copy and then make adjustments, or you can go to the My Pages area where you can create your own page from scratch. So I'm now quickly just gonna create a board page. I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to call it my forecast board. You select the workspace that you want to pull the data from. And then you select the model. And then you create the page, and that will take you into the page designer. So we have a number of cards at the top here, that, such as the grid cards, the chart cards, etc., which you can drag on and then point um, at the particular module you want to pull the data from. And Dave will talk us through that a bit shortly. But you can also, any of those cards you can create, you can save as a card template for future use. So this is really valuable for end users because they may not understand the, the structure of the modules within the model. So they can just simply drag um, the particular cards they're interested in here. So my top five accounts forecast, top five accounts grid, um, and then a account forecast grid. And you just drag these onto your board. And then you can configure the layout and then simply publish that 
and then within a few seconds uh, you've created a board that you can use to track the plan or report against. Okay, I'm now going to hand over to Dave who's going to talk uh, in a bit more detail around the worksheets and how you can drill into the information around that. Awesome, thanks Steve. Yeah, so as Steve says, I'm going to take you a little bit deeper into what you can do with the new UX. We're going to look at a worksheet and some of the features there and also how we can start to build up uh, some of these, uh, these views based on the data in our model. So I'll use our awesome new search tool um, and I will search for one of our pages. Now this is searching across all of the apps I have access to and is returning all of those appropriate pages. So the one I'm after is this one. I can click that and that'll take me straight to that page within that app. Now this is a, a worksheet, so perfect for uh, more detailed analysis, uh, diving deeper into the, the data. Um, I can configure the uh, page selectors as you'd expect. Let's go for Americas and that gives us our grid of data. We do, of course, have access to our additional insights on the side. There's additional visualizations that show us a little bit more about the data. But when we're working with the grid, we have some additional awesome features that we can, we can tap into. We can access cell history. We can filter directly within that worksheet. We can sort, and we can also run actions. These could be imports, exports, or in the new UX, there can be forms. We can build forms to allow users to insert data directly into their model. Uh, as an example here, we have an add account form, which prompts the user for those additional properties. They can insert that data directly into their model uh, really easily. Now the build process that Steve showed you is great if you have templates built already, or if your model already has module views that shape the data uh, how you need it. That's not always the case though. There are some instances where you may want to craft something in a new UX that isn't a perfect fit to what's in your model. The new UX can help you out. We have the concept of custom views. So if we have to edit the grid on the worksheet as a page builder, we have access to our safe module views, but also our custom views. This gives us a list of all of the modules we have access to. And then within here, we can do things like pivot, filter, sort, show hide, and uh, coming very soon, the ability to apply conditional formatting. So I'll do a quick pivot for us. Uh, we can move time onto context selectors, counts onto rows, and line items on columns. And you can see we get a real-time preview of that. We can do show and hide to reduce the, the content on screen, but what I'll show you is the conditional formatting. So we'll select previous year sales, hit conditional formatting, and we can start to define how that should look. I can pick colors, and then I can apply values. So if we just pivot that view again, here we go. Previous year sales, we say 5,000 to 50,000, and then pick our colors. And as we apply that, our conditional formatting applies to our grid as you'd expect. Now, as Steve said, our velocity of releasing new features on a new UX is greatly increased. And I'll show you one of the new features, which is a new visualization. We can switch to Morse, apply that. And then rather than using background colors for conditional formatting, we can render scaled visuals within those cells as well. Now this will be exclusive to the new UX and another great reason to, to move some of your applications across. Then as we publish that, those visuals are available in our worksheet. Now I'll also show you a quick preview of the new homepage. It's really important that our users have a really intuitive route into their Anaplan content, whether that's in the classic experience or the new user experience, and our new homepage will allow them to do that. It'll give them access to the pages, apps, favorites, and models they have access to in a really intuitive and simple way. So hopefully you're really excited by what we've shown you, but you may be thinking, how do we start to implement this? Now we've worked with customers over the last 12, year, uh, 12 months to really 
understand some of the, uh, the implementation challenges, and we want to share some tips and tricks with you. One of the things that is, uh, is, has worked really well with customers is drawing out a sitemap, identifying key personas and key user journeys, and starting to map those out visually. It then becomes quite easy to trace those, those routes, think about uh, how you structure your data and how you lead users from maybe high-level KPI and trend dashboards through to those more detailed worksheets. Another great thing to do is focus on the key requirements that deliver maximum value. Identify those flows through the, uh, the application that really deliver that value. The new UX is so quick and easy to build with that you'll be able to demonstrate value within your implementation really quickly based on the data you already have in your models. Now I've shown you how to build uh, some views and you may be thinking, what should I use, custom views or module views? Module views are great because if you have them built already in your model, they're really easy to implement in the UX. And if you change it in the model, that change flows through to everywhere it's used in the new UX. But as you've seen, custom views bring a load of power and flexibility in the new UX. You can pivot, you can sort, you can filter, you can apply conditional formatting, all without the help of a model builder. It puts greater flexibility and power in the hands of the page builders and the process experts. And as we move forward, our new features that we build into defining these views will be available only for custom views. So our recommendation is to give custom views a try. We think they're going to work really well for you as you move forward. OK, uh, thanks, Dave. So I wanted to talk a bit about the change management and development process with the new user experience as well. Um, so we've released features to allow you to duplicate a page, move a page, and also change the page um, change the model a page points at. So this can help, for example, if you have a dev model and a set of dev pages, and you make those changes in the dev model, you make those changes to your, your development environment in the UX, you could then sync across the changes in your dev model, and then you could make those changes in the dev app or the dev page, and then move that page to the production environment, and then point that page at the production model. So this allows you to have a, a, a change management process. So at the moment, you have to do that on an individual page level, but we are also working on a feature to allow you to copy an app and repoint the, the models that that app points at as well. So the other thing you need to be aware of to get started in the user, new user experience is you need to be a page builder role. So this is a new role that we've introduced. Uh, in order to make yourself or someone a page builder, you have to do this via the administrator. So you need to be a tenant admin to get to administrator. So if you don't know who your tenant admin is, then you can contact Support Anaplan and they will uh, tell you who your tenant admin is or assign someone as a tenant admin. You basically go into the access control area, select the user, and then tick uh, that, that person and that will make them a page builder and then they're good to go uh, for building pages within apps. So I talked a bit about my pages and we talked about how you could create a my page using card templates. Um, so to create my pages, you don't need to be a page builder, so any user can create a page. So the idea is the app pages, you need to be a page builder. So this gives you the central governance and control and you can lock down pages that no one else can change. But then you can take a copy of one of these pages and then make your adjustments, or you can create your own my page from scratch. And those pa my pages can be created either within an app, so you get the inbuilt app navigation, or they can be a freestanding page outside of the app. So we talked a bit about card templates, so we'd also recommend using card templates. This encourages consistency across the solution because you're reusing the same cards. It also accelerates the build process. So for example, you could have a KPI card template and then just copy it out and then for each card choose which line item you want that KPI to display. Uh, they're also particularly useful, as we mentioned, with my pages, as the model builder could provide a library of cards such as a PL statement or a cash flow statement or a forecast chart and then users could just drag that onto a board and create the page like I showed in the demo. Um, I also want to talk a bit about uh, access control. So the new user experience, it, it respects all permissions and access control that you have in the model from the very granular dynamic cell access through to selective, ac selective access and then the module role access. So if you go to a page and then your card points at a module that you do not have access to, then you won't see any data within that card. 
Currently though, you can see the page name, so we're adding a feature that allows you to restrict the access to the page itself. So how this will work is by default, all pages will be available to everyone, but you can choose to restrict a particular page. So you do that by choosing restrict users, and then a list of all the roles within the model that that page points at will be listed. And then you simply tick the roles that you want to have access to that page, and then apply that, and that page will then be restricted to those particular roles. OK, um, so I just wanted to talk about um, the mobile. So I'm not going to say much about the mobile other than that we do have a mobile app. So everything that you do build in the new user experience is also available straight away within the mobile. Um, we do have a dedicated session on the mobile app um, on the user groups live on the 14th. So if you are interested in the mobile app, uh, then make sure you register and watch that one. Um, so the mobile app is currently read-only, um, but we are going to make it um, writable, and that's something that we're working on very shortly. OK, so just some tips and overview uh, for the whole session. So um, the first piece is the home page, which Dave talked about. So this will be bringing together both the classic and the news experience. So you can navigate either to a model or to one of the pages within the news experience. Dave also talked about how it might be good to, to sketch out um, your, your sitemap, so identify those key personas um, and users and how they might use the user experience. Also think about whether you want to use a module view or a custom view. So the module views obviously could have the advantage that they may already exist in your model, so you can reuse them. Um, but even if you need to make those tweaks, you may need to jump between uh, the, the classic and the new user experience. Whereas if you use custom views, um, you can stay within the user experience and build things without that as well as take advantage of new features that we're working on, such as Morse, which Dave showed in the demo. And new features going forward will be continued to be adding to the new user experience um, going forward. We also talked a bit about the use of card templates, so a really powerful way of having consistency, as well as accelerating the build process, and incredibly useful for end users creating their My Pages and boards. And then I talked a bit about um, the page access, which we'll be uh, releasing shortly. Um, so you can start to think about what roles you have within the model today um, and add to them or build them out in preparation for when we release the page level access control and you move over to the new user experience. The final point is if you are building uh, a page for mobile, everything you build in the new UX is immediately available in the mobile with no additional work, but you might want to think about the design of the page so that it suits more the mobile layout. And Lee's got some really exciting things to share with you in his mobile session uh, on the 14th from London. OK, well, thank you all for listening. Uh, there'll be some call outs coming up in the, in the session. Um, but in the meantime, we have had some questions, which is great. Um, so we'll just uh, take a pause while we look at those questions. Hello, so we've had some questions in, uh, which is great. Um, so the, the first question we've had is, how would the drill down option work for the KPI view? Would it automatically go into a, a worksheet? So this is actually, um, it's configured manually. So you would go into uh, a card, and then you get the, op the opportunity to make that navigable. So you basically have a list of all your pages within the app, and then you can choose which worksheet or board that you want that navigation to go to. Um, so it doesn't have to be a worksheet. Uh, you can also drill down into another board page. So you could have a number of board pages uh, before you drill into the worksheet. Yeah. yeah. This is a, a really fantastic thing to think about while you're sketching out that sitemap. Identifying those, those key summary bits of data and how they might lead the user to, to more detail should they, they wish to, uh, to explore that. Um, we work very closely with our, our UX uh, colleagues 
to really understand things like progressive disclosure um, and the, the way of breaking that data down. And these are tips and, and techniques you can apply when building out your own site map as well. And as Steve says, the flexibilities in the new UX to create those navigation pathways however suits your end users. OK, we've got a, another question around the how UX has been received by other model builders and were there any major takeaways from project retrospectives that have changed the way we will be approaching future developments? Um, so a great, a great question. And as I mentioned, we actually released uh, a beta at the back end of last year. So we've been working with a lot of different customers on different projects. Um, and also, we've been iterating the new user experience as we go through that. Yep. So there's been, um, you know, we've also had um, an advisory board where we work with customers that were building out prototypes and POCs on the new user experience. So, um, so we have changed, our, you know, our approach and directions based on the priorities from those projects. Um, so, one thing that changed, for example, when we first released the new user experience, you could only connect to module views. So we wanted to get the new user experience up and running first, rather than have to build out all the configuration. Um, and then we introduced the custom views, which Dave shows, yeah. which means you could then build out the views and then do the pivoting and stuff in the new user experience. So that was an example of how you know the future development changed as we introduced the new feature. Um, what we have found, though, that some of the early adopters are continuing to use the module views because they may not be aware that, that custom views uh, have been introduced. So we need to, to work on communicating those new features that, that do come out. Um, but yeah, we're, we're continuing to hear feedback uh, from customers. And there is a feedback um, option, I think was in, mentioned in the earlier session. So if you do click on that feedback, we'd love to hear any, any um, advice or challenges that, that you've had in adopting the new UX. So yeah. Anything you want to say about no, that? I think, I think that's really key, Steve. Uh, that, that feedback button, um, whatever you submit there, comes straight to us. Um, we've been very uh, customer focused and customer first for the last year as we've been prioritizing features uh, to develop. Many of the features in the product uh, now are based on a lot of that feedback we've received. So keep that feedback coming. Uh, we're, we're really, we find that really valuable and it's really important to us. Um, no, I guess it's also worth to say that we have some of those early customers have now uh, completed planning cycles using the new UX. Um, so the new UX is becoming uh, really well embedded across a number of organizations. Um, and now's a great time to, to see what it can do for you. OK, uh, we've had another question through. And uh, when will the KPI cards uh, have the charts in the background? So this is the, the spark lines on the KPI card. Um, so that's something that, that we are working on. Um, we're looking probably around early next year, I'd have thought, for the, the KPI spark lines. Um, but we need to, to weigh it up with other priorities. And one of the, the focuses that we do have on the moment is the, the kind of parity. So if there's any parity items there that aren't there, we want to prioritise them um, to make sure that everything is there for people to adopt uh, the new user experience. OK, I think that's um, all the questions we've had. So, so thanks a lot for listening. and. As it mentions in the call-outs, I think there were three there, so make sure you've got set up as a, a page builder role. Um, keep an eye on community, because that's where we will post all the updates and the new features that we will be releasing. Um, and then um, have a go. Build a page yep. and see how you get on. Great. Steve and I will be joining the chat. So if there's any more questions, uh, we'll, uh, we'll hope to get them answered there. Thank you. Thank you very much.